Solar PV TV from World Future Energy Summit 2017 from Abu Dhabi. And now we are together with one of the pioneers of uh, solar industry in the world, Arturo Carrero, who is now chairman, founder, president of the company, which is specialized in solar projects, but also he brought something very interesting here to Abu Dhabi. So Arturo, could you tell us more about what did you bring here besides the solar projects that you are known in the world since you were young? Yeah, I've been in, in, in solar energy for 16 years now, and I'm getting older every year. I come here, I remind myself, one year more. Uh, but it's a pleasure to be among all of, all of you. So um, Alter Power is the company we founded uh, more than two years ago. And Alter Power is based in Switzerland. So we are uh, providing financing for some funds, Swiss funds, to projects. Every time, every, every kind of pro size of project. So we, we have small developments or even big developments like, like in Mexico. We, we did development for 350 projects in four projects, three of 100, one of 50 megawatts. And uh, we are offering that to Jinko, Jinko Solar, my previous company. They are very happy for this, this uh, uh, collaboration we have with them. So Alter Power is also working with companies like Power Electronics, inverter companies. Uh, or right technologies. So we do some due diligence on the projects and we provide some technologies. We're experts on, on solar panels, but also now in trackers and in solar inverters. So this is what Alter Power does. Now, part of Alter Power Investments, there is a company uh, very successful that was started uh, three years ago. That is Imobike, is the one we were presenting today. Imobike is based in Spain and Alter Power from Switzerland is providing support uh, of the products. So we, we produce the electric bikes and the batteries um, we buy from different sources. Uh, we are now dealing with uh, starting some co conversations with Huawei, but we are buying from Samsung in the past. The batteries, we, we assemble the bikes, electric bikes, and we offer that to Emobike. Alter Power is, has Emobike as a rental company that is providing these rental services to municipalities. This is our new target that is being very popular in cities like Madrid, like Spain, and in Barcelona, like uh, also London in UK. And um, we provide also hotels for tourists. So we have right now more than 100 hotels in Spain, 96 to be, to be, to be exact. A hotels that they have signed an agreement with us and we have provided four to six to 10 electric bikes with the charging stations with the software, with the GPS in the bikes, and with the APP to control and also to do the charging uh, of, the, of the timing from the, from the hotel reception. So the hotel reception has the software that we develop, and they can at any time see where are the bikes in their software and also control the timing in order to charge the, the fee. That is only 25 euros around per day, so it's, it's quite competitive. Okay, Arthur, so it's interesting, yeah, because uh, you are coming from the solar industry, but now as uh, solar is related actually to all the clean energies, uh, you started this business with bikes. And uh, you mentioned that at the beginning you started with the small hotels, etc. but uh, also you are now tendering the huge amounts of e-bikes, yeah, because I assume that like we ex are experiencing that in solar, we'll also experience the clean disruption in the emo bikes, yeah? so maybe it will be not uh, dozens, hundreds of hotels, it will be millions yeah, at the end. So could you comment on that? How do you see the, you know, the market growing? Because it's, for us it's the first topic. I, I'm sure you made it because you were in charge of the strategy of the largest companies like Trina, like Jinko Solar. So I'm sure that you also analyzed well the strategy and market opportunities for emo bikes. So could you tell us more about the strategy? And uh, let's present your company in 10 years to come. Well, Thomas, uh, we are just a startup in, in Alter Power and in Emo Bike. So we, we need still a lot of financing. So this is what um, is not like in Jinko or in Trina. We were in the IPO raising 100 uh, uh, million US dollar and then making the company very successful in the, internationally. We are step by step. But it is true, and answering your question, we have been seeing the trend, and you can see a lot of uh, reports from. Deutsche Bank or for Bloomberg Finance 
that the trend of electric mobility is becoming a, a fact, it's a reality, it's like the climate warming that some people they don't see, but uh, we are very clear and we have seen that a trend in most of the cities. The major cities has an issue on pollution we mentioned before, like uh, Mexico City, where they have already been investing in some electric bikes uh, for the cities. Madrid, they have this solution for the cities, electric bikes. Barcelona, there are still standard, uh, standard bikes, no electric bikes, but the standard bikes. Uh, we are seeing that in London also, in Paris, in Milan. So we have a very big network where we will be introducing our e-mobile solutions. Because also we are, we are innovative and we are competitive. The interesting thing is as that you, you mentioned before, we are tendering now at the end of uh, September this year, we are preparing to tender for city bike solution in Barcelona. It will be more than 7,000 bikes with 7,000 or, or probably 10,000 charging stations with our uh, software solutions, our APP. So we cross fingers and hopefully Ashala, in year 2020. <laughs> Hopefully, in 2020, we have already uh, um, this uh, at least 10,000 bikes around Europe. We have also signed a, a contract with a venture capital from Portugal, and they are now introducing us in several municipalities, small towns in Portugal. So hopefully, it will be around 3,000 bikes, so it's not small but around all Portugal. So we will see that in the next, uh, this year and next year, 2018. But also it's interesting that you are speaking about the cities, yes? Because over half of the population on Earth uh, is living in cities, especially in the big cities. And uh, when you are discussing with the mayors or the guys who are in charge of the sustainability in the cities, uh, do you see the trend, you know, towards clean energies, towards uh, becoming like 100% sustainable city? renewable energy city? Well, you can see here we have a very clear example, right? The Mazdar city is amazing. I, I have been there. Uh, in terms of, of Jinko, we have been approaching to them. We have very good relationship. Uh, and Mazdar is a very clear example that I wish it could be not only here in, in Emirates, but in all the world. But we have also seen that in Mexico, where we are spending a lot of time in Latin American countries, there is also a sustainability uh, part of uh, buildings. We have seen that in Chile. In Chile, there is uh, La Ciudad Renovable, the city, um, a smart city uh, outside of Santiago de Chile. So more and more, there is a trend. In USA, there is a, a company that we are working with that is called uh, Winglink. Uh, Winglink, they are in UK and in the USA from building the cities from scratch. So they are helping the municipalities to build all the uh, layout of the city. And obviously, they are taking on account sustainability, uh, renewable energies, uh, um, clean, clean uh, residual uh, of, the, of the waste, uh, the um, efficiency of the water consumption, and finally, the mobility. Mobility, at the end, we are part of this big world that is uh, changing the, the new generations. Big, move, big movement that for sure we are still at the scratch at the beginning. That's why we are, you, Thomas, and me, we have been in this, uh, in this uh, industry for 15, 16 years, believing always that this moment is still to come. It's still to come, but we are seeing a very big trend and it will be exponential growth. Okay, um, do we have any questions for the audience? Coming from Mongolia, we are uh, maybe number one or two polluted city in the world during winter three months. Because, yeah, half of the population live in the city, and 60% of them still living in a year that has to fire coal. So maybe we cannot have the bikes in the winter time, it's minus 30. But during the other seasons, I think it's also uh, needed in our country. Another problem is we have a lot of off road. So, does your bikes uh, have the strong wheel that can go <laughs> in the off road? That's my question. Well, to answer your questions, um, Mongolia is not a country that uh, it would be the easiest to provide all the solutions because of the high and low temperature during the year, right? Especially the, in the winter, it's extremely cold. That's, that's a fact. That's true. But it is, it is uh, a pro probably it is the best solution to, to have um, electric 
vehicles that maybe it's not a bike, but it has heating system inside, like electric bike, electric cars, small electric cars. That's, that's a solution that we will see a trend globally when the technology improves, when everything is more cost competitive and everything is cheaper. Um, in the cities, always there is the, some also possibilities to use bike in certain uh, buildings like uh, factories, and we are providing some factories that are heated. So people is working, and for the employees, they can use the electric bikes to go uh, one kilometers long inside their facilities. This is something that we can see, probably. Yeah, we need to talk about that. Okay. So this is uh, for the first part of your question, right? Then you mentioned, what about the bikes? Can, can they go on the, on the road that is not with the... Exactly, you don't have bike road. So here, what we can provide is electric bikes with electric solution and charging stations with mountain bikes. So bigger, and we have also, one of our uh, designers has been come to the fat bike. The fat bike is really, really fat. It's even able to drive with the engine in the sand, in the sand of the beach. So we are trying that in Barcelona coast, in Valencia, all the coast of Spain, you can, you can ride the bike in the sand. So Mongolia, probably in the places where there is not so much uh, roads, is a solution. But for sure in the city, in the city, the governments, the local municipality, they need to provide with the trucks, with the bikes uh, path. The bike path, we have, we have seen most of the cities in Europe, they are already investing a lot because the uh, citizens are demanding to go to work by bike. So we are making the cities much more sustainable. And it will, it will be a trend, as Thomas said, that it will not stop. So we will see more and more restrictions to traffic, restrictions to cars that are CO2 contaminants, that are using oil, uh, even diesel. They will be using more and more uh, electric vehicles, electric 100%. Now we know there is this hybrid cars, but I would suggest everybody to use 100% electric vehicles. But the city has to provide also solutions and, and private investment and private companies like us, they need to provide the charging stations. So we provide charging stations with solar panels on the roof. And this is something that the governments, uh, at least in, in south of Europe, are more and more interested. So thank you everybody for coming. That was Solar PVTV from World Future Energy Summit. Together with Arturo Herrero, one of the guys who helped the solar industry to grow. And now he's also helping people to make more electrical movements around the cities, around the globe. And uh, he promised us that he will never stop under the condition when 100% of people will be using solar energy and driving electric bikes. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching.